Intro music. <laughs> a star for the ages for Tony Gwynn, number 3,000. They have acquired Eric Johnson and Fernando Tatis Jr. from the White Sox in exchange for James Shield. <laughs> My name is Joey. My name is James. And this is the Brothers Padre. Welcome, James. How are you doing? I'm upset, Joseph. <laughs> Why are you upset? I am upset. James is upset for a later segment of this show. Because someone is a scaredy cat. I'm not a scaredy cat. We just have to talk about it. And this is what we call a tease, but that could be a second topic. James, this week we found out more Padres are all stars. Well, first and foremost, <laughs> happy birthday, Manny Machado. That's right. Happy, happy birthday. Yay. He's younger we, than both of us, and he makes ungodly amounts of money. We'd sing you the song, but we don't have the kind of money to pay for that. Yeah. We don't make that kind of podcast money. Not yet. No. Not yet, anyway. Please, Please come on our podcast. We'd love to interview you, Manny. Yeah. 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 Um,. We knew that Fernando Tatis Jr. was going to be the shortstop of the All Stars, the starting shortstop of the National League All Stars, and this week we found the reserves and the pot pitching, and uh, we have a few more Padres, James. We do. Uh, first, Hugh Darvish, which we pretty much knew about. I mean, he's one of the most dominant pitchers ever, especially in this league. His fifth All Star game. I didn't realize he'd been that many. Yeah. Yeah. First in the National League, first time in the National League, he's an All Star. All right, yeah, yeah. And uh, Mark Melanson, I knew he'd been to a few. It's his fourth. Yep. Well deserved, leading the league in saves. Mm-hmm. And Jake Cronenworth. Yep. Phenomenal. Uh, I'm very happy that Jake got there. Me too. Jake Cronenworth deserves it. The, the dude's a star. He just is. Yeah. I, uh, I'm just happy that the kind of stats that the reason how the reserves are picked is everyone, managers and players, vote for their favorite All Stars. And because, and I think the voting ended like two and a half weeks ago, which is probably why Manny wasn't picked because Manny's been tearing up the league the past two weeks, but the past two weeks and it was voted a while ago. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad that people saw Cronenworth play every day and say, oh, this guy is an All Star. And I think. Crazy. I mean, his story's awesome. Didn't make his debut till 27. You know, long time in the minors. Went from the Rays organization. Was kind of like viewed as a weird fluke pitcher, hitter, um, Otani light. And he's made a name for himself in San Diego. Was kind of an add-on in the Tommy Pham trade. You, you just, you're just very stoked about it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm. I think he's. He's definitely the one, the video, great Jay Stingler, not Jay Stingler, the Padres post on Jay Stingler, like telling the whole club who the all-star is. You can tell, like, to Jay, everyone knew, to Jake, it was very, very special. It was very special. I, I mean, it was special when um, Tatis got on there because it was his first time. Right. But Jay Cronenworth, well-deserved. He's earned, he's earned his spot to be considered one of the best players in baseball. Yeah. Absolutely, and his defense is unreal. He most likely will win a gold glove this year. Mm-hmm. And his offense is on point. He's just a great, great dude. Do you? Here's a question for you. Do you know the last time the Padres had four All-Stars? I always default to that one year that we always talk about. <laughs> is it that one year we always talk about? 1998? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Yeah. So In trivia must, Padres is either ninety eight Tony Gwynn or Nate Colbert. Those are the exactly. <laughs> those soon to be Tatis Jr. <laughs> so nineteen ninety eight the Padres also had a starter and a closer. We had Kevin Brown mm-hmm. and Trevor Hoffman. Mm-hmm. I know and these guys. Two position players, Tony Gwynn and Greg Vaughn. Yep. And we went to the World Series that year. This year, starter and a closer, and this time two infielders. Hmm. So let, let's hope there's better luck with the World Series this year. Looks like we won't be facing the Yankees, though. Oh, no, not at all. Unless they do something incredible like never lose a game ever again this year. <laughs> yeah. There were, there's, 
there's only one team losing that would make me happier, and that would be the Dodgers. Yeah. But to see the Yankees fall apart, especially to see... Because there was about 90% of the news media, the sports media, are all from New York, and they're all Yankees fans. To see them lose their minds... I feel bad for the players. I don't feel bad for any of the sports people <laughs> upset that the Yankees are losing. It's kind of awesome. Uh, we do have a, a loyal listener who's a Yankees fan, and I just want to say that this is this this we don't we're we're sad that he's sad. Yes, exactly. But we're not sad his team is bad. Does that make sense? Yeah, we empathize with his pain, but we don't care about the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I I just I just. It's hard to care about the Yankees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as, as one of the things about the All Stars, because it was voted two and a half weeks ago, Garrett Cole and er- Eraldus Chapman are both voted in. <laughs> which, like a month ago, they were incredible, and now the past few times they just have been rocked like crazy. Eraldus Chapman's not even a closer anymore. Dude, that's so nuts! Like watching him, watching that. I mean, it reminded me a bit of like Melanson's. Um, against the Reds, you're like, what is? Who is this guy? It's not even the right person. Someone like, it was like a weird uh, parent trap situation. No, that's not it. What what movie do they switch out? Freaky uh, Friday. Freaky Friday. Thank you. I don't know why I confused the two. <laughs> you know what, James? This weekend, I dr- um I drove by where Parent Trap was set, the original one with that one girl. Remember the one, the 1950s. I'm not that old, yeah. but I do know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I drove, by, I drove by the house where... Well, not really. I drove by where they filmed the house. And I didn't know that. My wife told me. And I was like, I'd, I'm going to have to share that with somebody. And you're the, you're the, you and the loyal listeners are now the people that know and, that. And, and <laughs> our lives are not better for it. Uh, I mean, this is, this is what they call the brothers, the brothers... The movie brothers movie? The movie brothers? I don't know where this bit's going. <laughs> I don't want this bit to continue. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I, I really like how the All-Stars allow other players to vote for other players because you get you do get like people in mass are just kind of not very smart when it comes to All-Stars because they just see the name recognition and just vote for it. Like Mike, this is I'm not bad mouthing Mike Trout but he's technically the starting center fielder of the American League. He's injured. <laughs> yeah, he's been injured for two months. <laughs> he's going to be injured until probably mid to late August. But he's starting center field. And he's third vote getter. Yeah. People who vote on mass didn't know he was hurt. Yeah. But, you know, it, that's, that does happen. So he'll step down. There'll be other substitute. And there might be more Padres. I mean, there's going to probably be, there's always injuries that happen or people that don't want to play. Jacob deGrom says he's not playing. Right. So other pitchers will be selected. Utility infield people often step out. Um, so yeah, I'm. Um, it could very well be more Padres, but for now we get send four, and that's awesome. Who? What Padre do you think was snubbed? Manny, but I think Manny's been playing the best baseball the past two weeks in the time after voting. True. I think defense wise, he should be there, but I think Manny for sure, and I think. I'm still. It's still interesting that like Wade Miley and Joe Musgrove weren't selected as pitchers. I don't know. It just feels like they just both threw no hitters. They probably should. I said this. A few it's episodes. not like they threw a no hitter. and That's all they did this year. Right. They're both good pitchers. I don't know. It just felt like those guys should have also gone. Um, I agree. I think Manny and jo- no, no Joe should have been selected. It, they just because they again he threw a no hitter. Yeah. And he has a ERA under t- under three. Mm-hmm. He's been a dominant pitcher. It just yeah, it, it it is a bit weird those guys aren't on there. But who knows? Jacob Degrom. They haven't said who's going to replace Degrom. Right. I think in the National League, like there's a pretty short list of like people that were super hot the past two weeks that were good the first part of the year that would be selected. I think definitely Manny's on that list. And I hope he does, but, you know. I I will say this about, especially the National League. Typically in an All-Star game, there's somebody that's like, okay, you're there because you're the only good player on your team. And sure, there's a few of those on there, but they're legit good players. Oh, yeah. 
like Anderson from the Pirates. Oh yeah, he's legitimately a, an all. He, he would be that. I'm Adam Fraser. And Adam Fraser, yeah. Yeah, he's really good. They're really really good, and yes, the, uh, they need a pick, and the, but one from that team, they got two. So there is no. I don't feel like because as Padre fans, usually it's like, oh look, there's the Padre. Yeah, he's going to be our reserve bullpen reserve. That means he's not going to pitch because <laughs> they don't want a Padre to ruin this game. Yep. I hope that uh, you Darvish gets his wish, wish though. Um, Which is? You Darvish wants to face Otani. Okay. He said that he would really love that. I don't know how that works. If DeGrom doesn't start, there's a viable case to say that you Darvish is... I would put, I yeah. mean, as much as I like Hugh Darvish starting, you'd have to give it to Corbin Burns, man. Probably. But I just feel like if if MLB's smart and they like eyeballs and news stories, maybe having the two stars have the most followings in all social media face each other might be a good, <laughs> might be a good idea. <laughs> That's I don't true. know. That's true. That's true. That is true. <laughs> I mean, there would just be it'd be blocked out, and uh, like all every of Japan, Japan, all was Japan was silent. Just, every channel would just be on this <laughs> Darvish versus Otani. Um, I also really, really so Otani is selected as a pitcher and a hitter. And I really hope he does both. But Joe Madden said he's allowed to do both. I don't know how they're gonna. They have to fudge some rules, but it's the All Star game, so who gives a crap? <laughs> I think they're just going to have um, Otani start and and the DH position. Yeah, move over to that. Yeah. 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 I'm, I, I'm actually more excited for this All-Star game. I think that there was none last year. And I just think the stars, I know a lot of Padres are going, so I'm a little biased. Because, you know, I don't think there's been a modern era Padre team that's obviously been this good. And also been this much fun all those guys are fun personalities um yeah, i'm very excited for the all-star game actually i'm pretty excited it's it, it, legitimately i'm excited for it too yeah and usually you're not really excited for the all-star game no no but it just it just feels like again baseball's back everyone's happy everyone's healthy yeah the world's back on track let's have a fantastic midsummer classic yeah i'm excited um but yeah um padres Brings good players to the All Star Game, and I think it's going to be the start of we're going to, we're going to see from this gr- bunch group of team uh, group of players from this team we're going to see multiple All Stars in the next five or six years for sure. Absolutely, you know, Grisham Grisham's an outlier too. He didn't have as hot, hot of a start, and he was injured for so much, but he's definitely an All Star caliber player. You know, Tommy Tom, Pham can be an Tommy All-Star Pham for sure. I mean, Will Myers and Eric Hosmer if they have a good first half. Another year, they definitely are there. Um, yeah, pitching wise, you know, Mackenzie Gore will probably start the All Star game next year. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> As a Yankee, As a Yankee. oh, because oh, oh, oh. they're sending us Aaron Judge. I was gonna say, yeah, we got ah, the presses. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would make all of LA have a heart attack, and that'd be awesome. I don't know. We were going to talk about the trade rumors at the show after the All-Stars because there are a lot of rumors and most of them are unsubstantiated. And usually right <laughs> the week after the All-Star game, they're more ironclad and yeah. More, yeah, more things are happening. Mackenzie Gore plus prospects for Aaron Judge might be the most ridiculous trade offer I've seen just because the idea of the Yankees giving up Aaron Judge is... So insane. It is truly insane. It's like saying, oh, well, let's give you Derek Jeter. No, you're not going to do that. You're just going to... This is this, this generation, their generation, Derek Jeter. He's the most popular player in the Yankees. I mean, like, they would kill the Steinbrenner, the, the son, Hal. They would just kill him. Like, no, you can't give away our... They're Aaron. on the verge of killing him. That's anyways. true. That might like, happen anyway. They, they are <laughs> so close to killing him right now. They're booing everything. Every time... Aaron Boone walks on the field. They're booing him. Are you sure it's not Boone? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah, I. that trade, I, every time I see that, it's been various iterations, like Robert Hassel plus Gore for Judge, and I'm like, 
I wouldn't mind Aaron Judge as a Padre, but I just... Well, there's also the rumor uh, Mackenzie Gore, C.J. Abrams for Juan Soto. <laughs> I like that a lot, but... I And I love C.J. Abrams. <laughs> and I love me some C.J. Abrams. Hmm. This is wild. wild. Think, that's a wild that's, trade. <laughs> well, C.J. Abrams is untradeable at the moment. Yeah, because he's injured. He broke his leg. Yeah. I have more faith in him bouncing back than in Mackenzie Gore, though. I do, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, James. So I'm, uh, we're going to be... We're doing one more recap episode. We haven't even talked about that. We're doing one more recap episode. Probably two more before the All-Star game right? break, right? Uh, uh, probably a short alt recap episode. Well, so basically it's going to be a recap episode, All-Star game, and then Thursday we're going to recap the weekend with the Rockies. We'll figure it out for you folks, loyal listeners. Um, but yeah, but next week we're going to have some fun. We're going to do a uh, podcast right after the All-Star game, reactions. And uh, last week you teased uh, a little fun game you and I are playing, a little reprieve um, during the All-Star game. And you started the episode very mad about it um, because before the episode I told you a piece of information that made you mad. So I'm going to caveat I'm not going to explain what I'm talking about. Last week, I was like, hey, James, during the All-Star break, let's have some fun. Let's draft the best Joeys and best Jameses in baseball, and let's compare the two and somehow like see who wins. Me not thinking thought it was a great idea. I now, head-to-head stats is a dumb idea, and uh, um, I regret suggesting that, James, but I still think it's a fun idea. So this is what happened. <laughs> Joey suggested, I think it sounded awesome and fun to do. <laughs> it is awesome. It and, is fun. And he, he rather selfishly did not watch a single Padre game over, week, over the oh, weekend. I, I know. Because he decided to go on a vacation with his wife and daughter. I think very I selfish. Know. But he said he was going to spend the weekend drafting his team of all the Joey's and he could pick from Joe, Joseph, or Joey's in baseball history to pick his team. And, and we were going to play it for you tonight. But what happened was, apparently there's no good Joes. No, there are some very good Joes and Josephs and Joey's in this, in this baseball world. But they're not nearly as good as all the Jameses. <laughs> Or what, Jims. What Jim? What Jim? Uh, just give me one Jim you think is better than one of your, J- your Joey's. I don't think there's a single in Joe infielder that compares with your infield. Joe Morgan might be the only person. That Joe Morgan has the best war of all time. Okay, James. Name me the first baseman and third baseman you have, and they're greater than Joe Morgan. I, I doubt it. I doubt really much. Um, a little, little, okay, I don't want you to spoil it. I don't want you to spoil it. Because I do think I, I, I did collect some data. I just know for a fact that... My hitting core of Joey and Josephs is very strong throughout baseball history. The pitching, that's where it gets super sketchy. It gets, it gets you know, it's kind of like the Cincinnati Red team, you know. Terr- a terrifying lineup. But we're throwing BP all day, you know. All right, not, not to, to, to give it away. <laughs> I do have a guy on my team. Yeah. Who was a reliever on my pitching staff. Uh-huh. He started 50 games in his career. Okay. One of them was a no-hitter against the Yankees. Yeah. You know, see, this is what I'm talking about. I need to figure out some game. I think this is fun. I think we should, in part of our show, we should talk about, you know, draft the names. And maybe, maybe, maybe some other next year we'll mix it all up and you and I will draft them. How fun would that be? Uh, because my current suggestion of rules... I was short-sighted because I lose. I'll be, I'm, I'm not above to say this. I, I will lose every time against James's. So James's in James, Jim, Jimmy, Jamie's incredibly strong baseball stats. Like incredibly. I can't, I can't understate this enough. Okay. <laughs> James, I don't know if you know this, is a saint in Christendom. Very popular name. Joseph isn't a saint. Not a popular name. So what happens is there's more Jameses. The data well, just, just it just turns out that the Jameses are winners. <laughs> like I mean, just look at our names. Um, there's been six presidents named James. So only been one Joey. 
Joseph, technically. I don't think, does anyone call him Joey? Uh, somebody does. <laughs> I'm sure someone When they does. give him his morning pudding, they probably call him Joey. <laughs> I need to figure out a rule, some simulation or something where it's even because uh, I lose and I, and I, you know, I'll be honest with my listeners. Yeah, I, I messed up. I'm, I am fuming right now because he told me, James, don't, I have a roster. It's just sad. <laughs> I have spent two weeks coming up with this roster, I, and it's I, been a real Sophie's choice. Oh let me tell you. Oh my god! Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> because who was I going to cut? I mean, I say so. What we're going to do is we have all nine position players, so we have to pick somebody who's played second base and ha- and Baseball Reference has to have him as a second baseman, right? As a registered second baseman. All nine positions, a DH, and five pitchers. Okay. And and, and the thing is, this was your rule. I'm I know. Following, I regret. I'm following I regret your rules. these rules. I I had a lot more confidence in the Joe Joseph Joeys and Jos of this baseball world, and I I should have had some. I should not have had that much confidence because, <laughs> boy oh boy. <laughs> I am so, so upset. James, who's the best Joseph uh, baseball pitcher? Just, just go out on a whim. Um, because he scratches his arm trying to furiously to figure out one. I mean, honestly, it's either Joe William, it's either Cyclo Joe Williams, or it's Joe Necro. Those are both good pitchers. They are half of what the best James Pitcher is. In well, who's the best James Pitcher? <laughs> tell, tell me who you think the best James Pitcher is. <sighs> is it Jim Palmer, James? He is the number one of our rotation. <laughs> <laughs> I, for our what audience, and for the sake of... Jim, I, Jim I, Palmer. I, 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 I'll do this, James. I'll do this, okay? For our audience next week in our all-star special, the fun fun episodes, I will, I will, I will honor my rules... I'll eat my humble pie, but then next time we do this, we gotta help out me a little bit. <laughs> I, I I will say one thing. I thought because you've been um, texting these little whiny emojis for the last week and a half about it, I was like, what if we did like a championship where we could? Because loyal listeners, when all there are two other brothers, Padres, we have a brother John yeah. and a brother Jeff, and I was like, oh, brother Jeff's gonna have a rough time. Like I say, you should think we name him Jeff. <laughs> Because you look at all-star players named Hall of Famers named Jeff. How many do you think is on that list? I think zero. No, there is no. There is there is there is one. Jeff Bagwell. Oh. Oh, and Jeff Kent is considered almost borderline. A, right. Borderline. Hall of very. Good. There is. Uh, John would kill us. I think I might have John pretty competitive. <laughs> um, but basically. <laughs> Between 1980 to 1980, all the good pitchers, there was always at least two Jameses in those stats. It's one of the most popular baby names in the 20th century. James. It was one of the most, let me say this again. It was the most, one of the most popular baby names. So was Joe. Yeah, but not for athletic families. <laughs> What was that um, <laughs> That old, because we're movie geeks too, that old um, Jimmy Stewart movie where he wants to get um, have a guy da- dance with his daughter. So he looks at this group of boys and goes, hey, Joe. And some guy walks over and, and he gives him 10 bucks to da- dance with his daughter. And his wife's like, how'd you know who that guy was? There's always a Joe in a group of boys. That's hilarious. <laughs> like, That's awesome. What is it? Mr. Hobbs' dream va- uh, vacation. That's what it was called. Mr. Hobbs goes on vacation? Yes. Is that the one where he's an airplane engineer? And then he's like a, he, he designs an airplane and he doesn't want to fly it? No, that's either Spirit of St. Louis or <laughs> um, the one where they've crashed in the desert. Those movies both are newer than the one I'm thinking of. You know, when Jimmy Stewart's like, once again, welcome to the Brothers movies. Uh, you know, Jimmy Stewart's an airplane pilot, airplane engineer. 
You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. Um, the, and, also, can you name me the best show, Joseph actor? Go. Um, no. Neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone. James is a winner. How can I say? Like, we're winners and champions. And, what, is and it, what, is, hey, what is that freaking movie? Whatever. I'll think of it later. You don't know what I'm talking about? No Highway in the Sky? No Highway in the Sky! That's what it was called. That is as esoteric as a Jimmy Stewart movie as you can come by. I'm sorry, listeners. Let's go back about baseball. Let's talk about how Joey is a whiner, <laughs> whiner, whiner. I will honor the rules that I have. The I rules just, that we're going to do today? Those rules? The rules that we're going to say today, but you decided you weren't going to do it? I just looked at the Total War and I just was sad. I just, <laughs> Just, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go with my heart on this, my roster. I know I'm gonna lose, but I'm just gonna pick the ones I I think are winners. Okay, winners at Joey's heart. W A J H. <laughs> new stat, hot new stat in the streets. Uh, next week I'll we'll explain. I can't believe you're doing this. Uh, I can't, I, ladies and gentlemen. Do you hear that? That's paper. What's in that paper is my team. Hear this. Uh, hear this. I'm shaking my phone because my phone's on a spreadsheet because I'm an adult. I printed up my <laughs> spreadsheet with a scorecard to do to, to fantasy stat scores on it so we would compare each other's notes. <laughs> and I have, I have all of my team. I have little facts about them. Like, for instance, one of my guys set the record for most RBIs in the game. And 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 I and I will. I, I will. I will honor these rules. You will that, that, that will not go in vain. In next week's silly episodes that we do, the All Star Game, you 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 will you will. It's not going to be in vain, James. It will not I be. I cannot. Vain. I'm just setting. I'm just setting our listeners up expectations to know that their favorite co-host is just going to lose. Hi. <laughs> Uh, you're you're vastly becoming the not their favorite part. You are you are a, a liar. I'm not a liar. I'm just and delaying the deadline. A whiner. You in my is, line of work, delaying deadlines is viewed as a leadership trait. <laughs> Never trust a software engineer, people. This is this is the name of the game. Apparently, you're kind of right. This, I can't. I, I am so unbelievably annoyed with you right now, and this happened literally five minutes before I started recording. You're gonna, you're gonna be fine. All those sheets of paper, don't go get water on them. You'll be fine. I have all. I this. know it's not gonna be in vain. Don't worry about it. I can't believe you're doing this. You're, you're fine. It'll be okay. And, and, and here's the thing: we scrapped all the other notes that we we're gonna talk about because we we're gonna talk about this. You knew this, this was gonna happen. I did. This is the. So, for those of you that might not understand what's going on here, let me understand. Let me let me let me hit you with a little sibling knowledge. The only reason why Joey thinks or is getting away with this apparently is because he's the baby of the family, and no. babies get away with everything in the family. Just kidding, if you're the youngest. Of a large group of fa- kids, you know you get away with murder. And if you're a kid who I've had, literally murdered five people. Yeah, you have. I know. I remember. <laughs> I had, you buried all the bodies. Mom made us bury all the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, should we just call the police? No. Uh, he's the youngest. He, he's <laughs> the youngest. <sighs> like, No, I, uh, I, uh, I mean, yeah, I just, I don't like my team. I'm just going to be honest. But I will, I will honor the rules next week and we'll, we'll go over it. I just... I, I cannot believe you're being such a little B word right now. It's so. Oh. But it'll be fun, James, before we sign off. Can we expect AJ Preller to do anything before the All Star break? I don't think anyone's going to do any trades during the All Star break. Someone did a standings um, breakdown. There's so many teams still kind of in it. Like even like we made fun of the Yankees, but they can have a good twenty game stretch and be in the wild card, right? And so you like so if you're one game above five hundred, like you're in this weird place where like that's so like yeah. the NL East right now oh my is gosh. very tight. Nobody's running away with it. Yeah, right the now the problem with the NL East is 
Yeah. They're also, none of them are really great teams. They're all okay teams. Just one of the teams has Jacob deGrom. New York Mets are leading the division. Phillies are four behind. Washington's four behind. Atlanta's five behind. Um, the Central. I the think Marlins are at 500. Yep. Marlins have 10 games under 500. 37 47. I thought they were better than that. Well, maybe because they beat the Dodge the last two days. Yeah. It just, yeah, I, there's just going to be a lot of, I mean, the Cubs, man. They should sell. Lost their 11th game in a row today. Dude, they've used Eric Sogard three times in the last 10 games. He's, a, he's not a pitcher. Um, not good. Uh, yeah, but I don't... So I think people... I mean, generally, it's considered faux pas to trade, especially trade all-stars before the all-star game. is like considered... I As of right now, I think the only all-star that's on the market is Joey Gallo. I don't see any of the Pirates that are in the all-star breaks being on the market. I don't think out of Frazier. No, and, he's still pretty uh, young. Like he's early in his contract. And Anderson, yeah. they're The Pirates are one of those teams that have a really good farm system, so you know they're looking to build a team around these stars. So they, might I don't trade, think they might trade Richard Rodriguez, their closer. Yeah, but just I just don't see it either. They don't, I don't see... Well, here's a question. What teams do you think are sellers? Rockies. Definitely. Diamondbacks have already started selling. I mean, they sold, but they months. have nobody. Le- they literally have nobody left. Anybody good to sell? And then they'd be stupid. I mean, Marte's hurt. I guess they could. St- I mean, Eduardo Escobar has now been mentioned several times. Bob Nightingale said he was going to the White Sox, and that was a week and a half ago, and he's still a Diamondback. So I don't think that's going to happen. But they could trade Eduardo Escobar. David Peralta still could be traded. But it's just tough, though. I mean, I don't think it's like a corner. I mean, David Paul's a good hitter, but like, it's not a blockbuster trade. Like that's the thing is, like, there's, there's no super bad team has a super great player right now, and like the ones that probably did is like Cedric Mullins for the for the Orioles, but then he's on he's like a on a second year contract, and, Rook, and the Orioles are rebuilding. They're gonna rebuild around him. Like he's so good. Um, they uh, think Duffy. I, 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 yeah, Duffy from the Royals. Um, I think the or- Royals definitely need to sell. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that. I think that the I think the Rockies, Diamondbacks, Pittsburgh probably gonna get rid of their closer, and then Baltimore will try to find someone. I can see Freddie Galvis being traded. Someone needs a middle infield, and then. Um, I just don't see Minnesota. I mean, Minnesota's last in AL Central. I don't see them trading anyone. Just because they well, just say... Well, who... Uh, like, their best player is Nelson Cruz. He's 41. He mashes, dude. He does. He's... Padres can't take him. Like, he has to be somewhere of a DH. Yeah. But there isn't any... I don't know of any team in the running right now that needs a DH. No. The Royals need to sell, though. The Angels are weird because they're at 500 right now. But they're going to be 500 weird. at the end of the season, too. It's so they're not going to be anything so better upsetting. than 500. It's so upsetting. Unbelievably upsetting. <laughs> yeah. Is, think, it, is, yeah. Is, is it as upsetting? It probably is as, as upsetting as when somebody promises something. <laughs> I didn't never promise. Tells you, hey, said, we're going to do I this. I said that I would try to. On this day. I was on vacation. You can, I can, I'll pull up the tape. We no. have it on podcast. <laughs> you said we were going to do it. I also have multiple text messages from you. And you're like, oh, I'm going to find out vacation. And yeah. we're going to get we're gonna bring the score. I'm thing. still going to do it. Just going to be next week. Chill out. Just wait an extra week. You're going to just make up a bunch of, you're going to, you're going to print up fake um, fake, birth fake. certificates for people it's like make fake baseball that's a guy did idea. you know Joseph ba- Joseph Babe Ruth who yeah. is this guy <laughs> just <laughs> show how is Japanese for Joseph yeah uh, Joseph Mantle oh, I have a funny mustache <laughs> Ooh, look at that who's this guy who's this guy <laughs> never heard of him but he's great yeah uh, Joe Garrick <laughs> he's also great 
I'll do it next week. Chill out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I made some progress on the Empire Era thing, though. Found some, found some good resources for that. So that, that I have some data to show probably after the All-Star break about how to like quantify that some more. All right. Well, but so... Uh, but basically, I found a way to like source it and like actually get it. at least at least I'll start knowing like at the per game level how many they happen, and then I'll be able to know um, for viewer listeners. Um, James and I are going to try to figure out a way to like track when umpires give up big errors or big missed calls, and umpire induced runs. And so I just did like first bit of research on that, and so yeah, that's looking like I'd be able to get source at least umpire errors pretty easily. Um, and I should have some data to show probably after the All Star break around that. Um, but MLB Network kind of did some of the work for us because they showed that the the Potters are second most in out of the zone strike calls. I saw that, yeah, which is crazy. We have like five hundred eighty something out of those zone strike calls that have been called strike on our hitters. So basically, balls are outside the strikes and they call strikes. Yeah, not good. And it doesn't make any sense because you would think, yeah, the Potters are seeing more and more pitches, maybe because we fell off a lot of pitches. And maybe that's happening. The first team is the Rangers. It makes no sense. And they're swinging at everything. I don't so it makes it. absolutely no sense. It's uh, over the... Um, Blake Snell was robbed of a good, in, a good inning the other day pitching against um, Philadelphia. He, he had, to quote Jesse Agler... He just walked that batter on six straight strikes. Oof. And it was throughout the game. The, the guy's strike zone was a hand width in. So everything was just, just, just the small strikes you've ever seen. And I, I think Blake Snell had a really good pitching before. His, the stats don't show it. He walked a, few, a lot, but it's just because he, he was spot on with his location, but everything was being called a ball. Rough. Rough. Yeah. Hopefully I'll get some more information to share with that. Um, I think it's actually getting, I mean, I think the more I look into it, the more I'm like, this umpires need to like either get block this data from us and get rid of the box. Let us live in ignorance or this has got to change because there's only so much we can watch balls outside the zone and just get calls strikes. You know? Yeah. DeGrom too, man. Dude, a little bit of a bug to Grom. To Grom gets some, gets away with murder. Dude gets calls outside the zone because, because I mean, I understand why his fastballs have like five miles of horizontal like distance travel. Like, get it? Like, it starts out in you know right field and ends up in left. Like, I get, I understand it, but you still have to know where it ends up, you know. And you can't. A guy throws 102. You can't call strikes at 102 at three ball lengths outside the strike zone. <laughs> You can't do that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It is, it is ridiculous. And it just seems like every year the umpires get worse and worse and worse. Yep. But yeah, look, maybe that, James. Any other potter related um, notes before we end the episode, James? I appreciate you writing the notes this weekend for us. James writes notes very well for us, or we both write notes, and I was on vacation. I didn't watch almost any potter baseball. You, you kept notes for us this yeah, morning. I yeah. appreciate, it. appreciate it. The notes for this episode said we're going to draft and score our fantasy teams. I, I'm saying the notes for next week say that. And we were going to draft and score our teams and use <laughs> standard fantasy team points for their careers, uh, which is one point for a single, two points for a double, three points for a triple, four points for a home run, um, five points for a win. For if you're a pitcher... And, a, and 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 uh, points deducted if you have a good whip and a good um, and fewer strikeout. <laughs> you, you get points for stolen bases. You get negative points for caught stealing. And and we were going to do that today. And I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, my co-host <laughs> is a whiner. And and <laughs> yeah, and, and delaying he, a week. He, I mean this. I mean I didn't watch. And that. a manipulator. I will just say that. And a, you know what he did to me today. I I came home. I came to visit. I'm at his house right now. He starts telling me all the adorable things my niece has done the last 48 hours, and then he got me all like, "Oh, I love my niece." Then he goes, "Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm squelching on our deal <laughs> because I, I'm I a week. am a loser." 
<sighs> well, tune in next week. If you right. <laughs> it's going to happen after right after the All Star Game. It's happening. If not, I'm going to have to get a hold of Jeff. <laughs> Uh, maybe even John. Maybe you know. even John. <laughs> I, I, this, 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 this is high treason. <laughs> high treason. James, we're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Overcast. Remember to subscribe. We're on Twitter at Brothers Padre. Um, yeah, we do twice a week. You, you lovely listeners already know that. And until next time, James, go Padres. Happy birthday, Manny Machado. <laughs> You can hang a star on that, baby. I need to know the rules of how we're scoring before I pick the Joseph. I sent you a dozen different ways to score. I lose every time. I don't care. <laughs>